If it's in the news and affects your health, we've got you covered today. And our good friend, attorney and legal analyst, Ariva Martin, is back to help us out with more hot topics. This first one, if you're a non-smoker, there's a pretty good chance the smell of cigarettes alone can make you cringe. But did you know that nearly half of apartment dwellers in this country live with a smoking or smoke from a neighboring unit that just wafts into their little or wastes in their personal space in one way or another? Well, this is a groundbreaking ruling. One New York City apartment dweller is $120,000 richer following a lawsuit over secondhand smoke infiltration. Ariva, explain this case to us and, and why it's so groundbreaking. It's so important because we all know about the anti-smoking laws as it relates to public buildings. So you can't uh, smoke in a restaurant, you can't smoke in an office building. But this says that even in a multifamily unit, apartment unit, a co-op, that you can't smoke in your unit if that smoke has a way to seep into my apartment because essentially I'm being exposed to your secondhand smoke. And it's really, really important because if you think about all the fixtures in an the apartment, the, the vents, the ducts, the walls that aren't nicely sealed, there are so many opportunities for that smoke to seep into someone else's well, apartment. This 69 toxic chemicals in secondhand smoke, but my curiosity is in the settlement, who paid the settlement? Was it the apartment landlord or the individual that was smoking, say, next door? Well, this was a co-op, and okay. what this tenant did was she said, look, co-op, you're not protecting me. So she actually sued the, the co-op. Co ah. So if you're an apartment dweller, this might be a lawsuit against the owner of that apartment building. And I've handled cases like that. I've represented uh, a couple who were getting headaches and they were getting sick, and it turned out that there was some toxic gas huh. that was being emitted in their building. So lots of people live in apartments where something like this might be going on. So that's why this case is so groundbreaking and so important. Right now we know, like I said, public buildings, it hasn't been legally expanded, but this lawsuit I think is a yeah. Yeah, first if you're an big apartment step owner that. or you're the landlord, after this case, there is no way you're allowing smoking to occur in your apartment. I, I do empathize and feel for a smoker who has not yet kicked the habit. Yeah. And this obviously, you know, maybe it ends up forcing them to do so, but but what what can you provide them so that they don't feel like they are ostracized? Is, is it a matter of like in certain airports where maybe apartments smoking. are now going to have a smoking lounge? And, and we may see that. We may see apartment buildings or these co-ops saying, look, here's the room for smokers, but if it's attached or if it there's any way that someone smoking in that designated area can still impact the other tenants, I don't think that's going to be enough. I hope that something like this forces those smokers, and I'm sympathetic to them, mm -hmm. to really think about doing something that's going to protect their own health, make them healthier, but at the same time protect the health of those that live in this shared you know apartment this building. Ruling. The tobacco, the tobacco company. company. Oh, they're was, hating I mean, this. that's what I was going to say. Are, are they going to get involved if, if but, further, further legislation comes up? Interesting. But think about where we've come legislatively over the last couple of decades. We've seen With huge restaurants, lawsuits places. against the tobacco companies, and we've seen laws that now prevent smoking in almost every public place. So this is the next frontier. Just one more reason to quit smoking. One important reason.